This is the Music Mansion, one of the most popular theaters in this area. And right now, Mike's inside doing a little picking with the star of the show, James Rogers. Yippee I. Yippee I. Ghost riders in the sky. That's great. James. I know you're not going to remember song. this. Good old, good old song. Good old song. I know you're not going to remember this, but about 12 or 15 years ago, I mm -hmm. saw you and met you briefly after your show at the Ramada Inn in Chattanooga. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it was just great. I was knocked out. I was <laughs> playing a little bit uh, around here and there myself at the time. One thing that stands out in my mind, when you did that show at the Ramada Inn, you had some type of tape recorder with a loop tape. Oh, yeah. And you played uh, you played the song, and then you played with it. Recorded over with it, yeah. You know, they don't make those things anymore. Uh, right? Nope, nope. That was a, it was a loop device uh, a echo machine called an Echoplex. Okay. And I used to love to, uh, to record a verse of a song, say, in All the Gold in California, or uh, Jim Croce, I'll Have to Say I Love You in Song. I'd sing it through one time, and then it would come back around, and I'd sing the first harmony, and th that would add to it. Uh, it would go, so it would go through again, and then it would come back around a third time, and I'd add a third harmony, yeah. which was uh, gave me a lot of practice for sure. in the recording studio and stuff like that. But by the time you finished it, it it certainly didn't sound like one guy playing anymore, because in uh, essence it was, and yeah. it was three it was yeah. three people, which uh, you know, and, and since it was just just a two minute loop, that meant a song was. Uh, six minutes but you know with people in there just uh, uh talking and having fun you know everything it was all right so yeah it that was a lot of fun it, that, yeah it gosh you great. do remember you it knocked me out because i remember i went to atlanta and tried to find one of those units because i talked to you about i it think afterwards. i think they were getting old even in those days and i couldn't find one. to be perfectly honest they came out with a lot of new digital stuff that was supposed to be the new and improved uh -huh. you couldn't do stuff like that with it it yeah. never was as good yeah. as yeah. as the old stuff so gosh yeah. you sound like an old timer now <laughs> and it wasn't as good <laughs> you couldn't do that unless you went to the studio. You yeah. could do that in the studio, but you always could. Yeah. This was something you could just write right there live. That yeah. was cool. That yeah. was a lot of fun. That, I, really was. that surprises me right. you remember that. Yeah, I sure do. Um, now, you wrote, and I may not say this correctly, but I think the Tennessee anthem or... Well, I wrote a song. I know, I know what you're trying to, to remember there is uh, I wrote a song called uh, Fly Eagle Fly. Mm-hmm. And uh, in 1976, it was adopted then as our bicentennial song mm -hmm. in the state of Tennessee. And then in, uh, and then in 83, a group of, uh, of uh, senators and a governor got together and decided, you know, we don't want this song just to be our bicentennial song. That was a long time ago. That was in 76. Yeah. And he went ahead and made it a state song as yeah. well. So that's a real honor. Yeah. You know, oh, to, sure to have a, a song that, that you wrote as a, as a state song, you know. Yeah. It's it's not as well known as Rocky Top, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. It's still state known. Well, you know what? Uh, here at the at the Music Mansion, you've you've come a long way from the Ramada Inn in well, Chattanooga. Yeah, I've enjoyed what, it. How, what happened? Okay. How did this about come this, about? About right after when the time that you're talking about, you know, I'd, I was still traveling around. I was playing everything from small lounges to large venues where I would open shows for. Uh -huh. Alabama and Roy Clark and Glenn Campbell or whoever but you know you don't do that every day so you end up playing about wherever you can pick up your guitar and make make a dollar yeah. and uh, some a group of uh, folks here in the, the Knoxville area uh, told me about a, a place up in the mountains called Silver Dollar City <clears throat> and it and they said you know if you win this talent search uh, type thing. Uh, you get a recording contract and uh, they take you to Nashville and uh, you know some good things and there's a lot of important people that are the judges in this particular talent thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, yeah right, I'm, I'm going to go sing at an amusement park. <laughs> but, you know, whoopee doo. Well, guess what? I went up and I sang at that amusement park and it was one of the most fun things, eye-opening things that ever happened to me. I, I did win the contest. Uh -huh. I got to go to Nashville and do some recording and be on the Grand Ole Opry. I met a lot of really nice people. And uh, 
for the first time in my life, I'd always, I'd always played a lot of lounges. Mm -hmm. And that was always fun. That was always fun. But for the first time in my life, people would actually come and just sit down on benches in the sun sometimes to hear me just play my music. They weren't there to uh, have a beverage. Mm -hmm. They weren't there to try to pick up members of the other gender. Yeah. They were there to hear me play, and I said, I can get used to this. And then, after you would finish, they would line up to shake your hand and talk to you and buy your music, and you autograph it for them. And I said, I can get used to this. Oh, yeah. So it was a, it was a real, a real eye-opener for me. And then 80, I mean, uh, yeah, in 85, 86, Silver Dollar City became uh, Dollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had established a relationship with the Silver Dollar City Company, and I still have that relationship even now because, uh, you know, it's, it's still them that are my partners here with uh -huh. Music Mansion. Uh -huh. And we've just kind of grown together. And the next thing you know, I'm not singing on a gazebo stage. I'm singing in a nice little theater oh. at, at uh, Dollywood uh -huh. and then into an even larger very nice theater at Dollywood, and then finally said, "Hey, let's step off the curb. Let's let's go build a a mansion out on the main drag, right? At, you know, sure. and uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. We, you know, thanks to everyone that comes to see us, we're the number one most attended show in the Smoky Mountains." Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't you come? James, it was really good seeing you again. Right. By the way, if you can ever find me one of those echo plexes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to go back and dig uh, through all my stuff because uh, I don't think I have any. Uh, I don't have those tapes that went through I it anyway. It was a continuous find. loop. Yeah. Well, hey, let's pick one more. Let's hey, play. let's do. Let's Name do. One. Hey, this is one of the first songs that my uncle ever taught me uh, to play, and he's the one who taught me how to play chords. So it's Don Gibson song. Everybody's going out and having fun. Remember that one? Yeah. I'm just a fool for staying home and having none. Well, I can't get over how she set me free. Oh, lonesome me. Yeah. Oh, lonesome me. Brought to you by the letters V, 